So this next presenter, Dr. Ben Adkins, I've had the pleasure of working with him for about a year and a half now, and he's an absolute brilliant marketer. I love working with this guy. He is just amazing at marketing in general, but very specifically, he just wows me every time he opens his mouth and talks about Facebook because he's doing stuff that nobody else is doing. Recently, he released a product that made retargeting super, super simple in Facebook, and that's what he's going to be talking about today, retargeting. Prior to him releasing this product and showing me all his like voodoo magic, ninja, I forgot the other part of that, uh, alien ninja blank, uh, uh, retargeting used to be very, very complex. So whether you know about retargeting or not, I know that you're going to get a lot out of this presentation. You've got to understand this stuff because this is one of those things that if you do it and if you do it right, it's going to give you tremendous return on your investment. So with that, Dr. Ben Adkins, welcome. Hey, hey. How's it going? Give you all this stuff you're going to learn how to use. Ah... So, how many of you are excited to be in Las Vegas? Yeah. I've, been in this, I've missed some flights out of Las Vegas before, let's put it that way. It's that kind of town. So, I got to say, this morning with the content that we've had, um, I can guarantee you guys, nobody's getting this kind of stuff. Um, you know, Jason, Will, Ben, Morgan and Matson, they don't know this, but I don't go into business with a lot of folks. And we actually have gone into business and we're doing a lot of things together. And it's because these are guys that not only do they really care about the people that they work with and the people that buy stuff from them, but they go all in. How many of you go all in? And you can honestly say you go all in with everything that you do online. Okay. Before I get started, let me just tell you a secret. Why are you here? To make money. Make money, right? Good answer. You were listening. But it's because you believe that to get to that goal, these guys can help you get there, right? Yeah. And it's because they go all in. And they don't have to say they go all in, but you get it, right? Like none of us would be here. I wouldn't be in business with these guys. I wouldn't be here today if I didn't see that in them. So just understand with anything that you're doing right now, you know, all the frustrations that you have, we all have them. You know, every time I jump into a new product, I have a new frustration. But understand, if you're going all in, and you're doing that for your customer, and you're doing that for everybody involved, and it's a win-win situation, everything will turn out okay. Okay? Go hard, but go all in for the people you service. That's what it's all about. So, I'm in a cooking mood this week. Anybody that's on my list knows that. <laughs> so, I figured we would talk about baking an ASM cake. And... Uh, what I'm going to be showing you today is how to use Facebook to do some really cool stuff. For those of you that don't know me, I started off as a chiropractor. It was a great gig. Um, I'm pretty sure I bought some stuff from Ben Cummins, but um, he's an excellent, excellent guy, and I learn a lot from him all the time. But with this stuff that we're doing online, it was a lot easier than that. You know, when I started doing Facebook, I was trying to market a practice and get people in, and then I was going to crack their neck, right? Not the easiest sell in the world. This kind of stuff's much easier. So what I'm going to show you today is how we put together some very interesting stuff using Facebook to get traffic to our Amazon listings without sacrificing rank. Is that cool? Cool. All right. So first things first, can we make each other a promise? I think Will just alluded to this, but here's the thing. I'm going to show you some stuff that nobody else gets to see. It's all legal. Um... A little bit sneaky though. Nothing is black hat here, but it's stuff that it's deep into the psychology of why people buy, and some of you may feel a little uncomfortable with it, okay? There, if this sneaky stuff only works if they really wanted it in the first place, all right? So that said though, don't put this in the wrong hands. Those other people that decided not to be with us, don't give it to them. So the main thing is, Raise your hand if you promise not to tell anybody this stuff. Pull out your wallet next. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Once you see if people will do what you say they're going to do, yeah, just go for it, right? So, good. So let's get into it. So this is what we're going to be cooking today. Think of this like a cookbook. We're going to be basically putting together a Facebook-powered sales machine, 
Sound good? So you're going to have to buy ads, okay? You're going to have to buy some ads. You're going to have to put some money in this, but it's very, very little money, okay? Very, very little money. And the idea behind this is we're going to be able to sell our item, build an email list, because what have we been talking about all day today with running traffic from certain places? If you don't build a list, it could go away really quickly, right? Yeah, we, we, we want to get that rank. You know, that rank is going to stick. But if we don't build the list, it can be tough, especially in the long haul. So we want to do that. The other thing, though, is I want to teach you how to sell your stuff, even if they don't buy the first time they get to your listing. Sound good? All right, cool. So a couple of ingredients. This is going to look a little intimidating the first time you see it. But don't worry, we need a couple of things. Two special web pages. I use lead pages to build these. You don't have to use lead pages to build these, okay? These can be as ugly as sin and they still work, all right? I use lead pages because I'm lazy and I don't like doing anything with code. Very little with code anyway. You're going to need a Facebook ad. This is your front-facing Facebook ad. This is what gets traffic to your stuff in the first place, okay? This is not any retargeting, anything like that. This is the first time someone ever sees your item. Everybody understand that? Good. I ask a lot of questions. Be extra loud. And you're going to need one retargeting ad. I'll give you the templates on these, by the way. They're super simple. Um, so if you are doing... How many of you are doing retargeting right now? Who's doing retargeting? Cool. How would you like if I made you a whole lot more money without you spending more money? Cool. Would you trust me just a little bit on this one? Good. These are not hard, and I'll show you how to make it happen. ASM Ranker Tool. How many of you are using that? A little more, yeah. For those of you that are not using it, I'm about to make you more money. Start using it, okay? There you go. You can leave happy. ASM Ranker Tool. After that, two special softwares that I use. You don't have to use these at all. These are softwares I obviously own, so I don't want you to think I'm up here pitching you. But if I didn't use my own software, something would be wrong, wouldn't it? Yeah, okay, so the reason I'm using these is because I built them for me. We just happen to actually sell them too, and I actually do use them. An autoresponder. Who has an autoresponder in here? There we go. All right, good. All right, and then whatever you're selling on Amazon. These are the things that we need, okay? By the way, you can write, around, write down the finer points. Um, I'll make sure you guys get these slides, okay? All right, so here's the deal. Before you get, you look at anything that I'm telling you today and you get to a point to where you're overwhelmed, just understand if you do 20% of what I'm going to teach you today, you'll, you'll do really well with this, okay? The key is, is don't overcomplicate this. Get one little tiny thing to work, 20% of what I'm going to show you, and then after that works really well and you're making money, we'll stack on little layers, okay? This is the secret to my success online. Now, another thing you need to know, we run these things that I'm going to show you in about four-day stretches, Okay? Four-day stretches, and that's how we basically do this. Okay. So, step one, Facebook ads to Amazon items. Do we run those ads directly to Amazon items? No, good, good. Okay, number two, integrating the Ranker tool. So we're going to be using the very special Ranker tool that we have only, as a group, been privy to. Okay? So don't be telling people this shit. It's not good. There's the first one. It started. Once it starts, the seal's broken and it's over. Just, you've been warned. Retargeting like a pro is step number three. So I'm going to teach you the tactics behind retargeting. Everybody will give you a piece of software to run retargeting, but they won't tell you the strategy behind it, right? Because it's, you have to have some strategy behind retargeting. And then build the, act, the list and actually use it. Sound like a good spend of our time? Good. Okay, cool. We will take questions at the end. And I'm going to try not to bore you in between here and there. First things first, the complicated diagram that gets everybody excited about what I'm going to say and then I'm not going to talk about it at all. I'm kidding. We're going to talk about this. First things first is the overview. A couple of things on this page. If you want to take a picture, go ahead. I will get this to you. But I wanted to make sure I give credit where credit is due. Number one, I have an intro Facebook ad. Okay? Now the idea behind this is what? Let me give you this. The idea behind this whole thing is basically this. We get a lot of sales in a short amount of time, and we send a very clear signal to Amazon. Okay? That's it. That's all we're doing. We're trying to get a lot of sales in a very short amount of time to send a signal to Amazon that we're converting very, very well on the traffic that's hitting our listing. That's it. Very simple. 
Starts with an intro Facebook ad. I'll show you this very special ad. This is a little different than what Ben does. Um, Ben Cummins, he has a very cool Facebook technique that is built into this in a way. He has a little bit of a different way that he runs it, and I'll show you kind of how we do it. But I got to say, Ben has helped me a ton with this. You know, some mornings you wake up, I'm the Facebook guy. You feel real good about that? I'm the guy that knows all this Facebook stuff. And then you got, you got Ben that comes over here, hey, you should do this. And then you're like, I'm, stu- I'm really stupid. I'm really dumb. That's so genius. So what we're doing from that Facebook ad, we're kind of sending to what I call the Ben Cummins page. And it's just fun to say the Ben Cummins page. So we're sending that, you perverts, just golly. All right, from there, we are using a little retargeting setup, which I'll teach you guys about in a minute to actually lead to our Amazon page. So we're actually protecting our listing with an opt-in page, which some of you have seen. But when we actually send to our Amazon page, we're not sending them just through our ASM Ranker link, for those of you that know what I'm talking about with that. We're also sending them through a link which sets up retargeting. Cool? Everybody follow me. Good. So not only are we getting that cool ranking juice that we want, we are also getting a cookie dropped so that we can retarget them later. Pretty handy, right? So what we're doing is we're making the most out of every piece of traffic that we have. That's what we want. The most out of every piece of traffic we have. We've got, once they opt in, we're retargeting them. Um, We've got a retargeting ad that's a little different from our original ad. And then we've got the list that's going to back this whole thing up. But they all flow in through our ranker link to our Amazon page. Okay? However... The key component of this is what? We are protecting our Amazon listing. This is not Teespring. Love Teespring. Those of you that know me know I love Teespring. I I sing it from the rooftops every day. It's my favorite thing. But the idea behind something like a Teespring or an internet marketing product that we would try to say to you is what? Get as much damn traffic there as you possibly can, right? Just get it there. Hope to God it converts. Hope that something sticks with the person that gets there. That's the whole ballgame. Not so with Amazon. We know that, right? You guys have been through the training. You know that's a bad thing. So we're protecting our listing, okay? And it's all done through this little process. You ready to get in depth with it? All right. I was actually done, so I'm just going to vamp for an hour. But okay. So here's step one. Facebook ads to Amazon items. How many of you suck at ads on Facebook? Go ahead. Every so often I do. And half of you are lying. Okay. So here's the key. I can run you through a big demographic thing that we're going to do, but these are the most important questions that I really ask myself. I, I need to know who this person that might buy this is. I need to know that. I need to know that it's a female and she's 35 years old. She's got two kids. She's gone to college. She's got that degree. She's got a job most likely in this. I need to know all of those things, right? But these are some things that I really want to know when I'm running these kinds of ads. I want to know what do they watch? What do these people watch on TV when they, in their downtime, okay? When you're marketing on Facebook, that's important, okay? What do they read? How many of you have two or three things that you read every day or every week? And it's like your thing. When they were talking about Reddit earlier, I'm like, that's my thing. I'm a Reddit kid all the way, every night. Who are their heroes? Why are heroes so important? Anybody know? Values are good. We can understand their values, but we can really at a core level understand who they want to be. How many of you have started to see that your life is starting to look a little bit like your hero? Yeah. Who was my hero when I first started in this business? This guy named Kern. Too many drinks later, you figure that's not the best. No, I'm just kidding. I love Frank. (laughs) But the key is, is you have your heroes. And if you really focus on those heroes, you start turning kind of out like your heroes, or at least a piece of you is. And then you kind of got to figure out who the hell you are. You got to figure out who you are. But the point is, is we understand heroes. We understand who they want to be, correct? How many of you buy things based on who you want to be? We all do. We all do. I bought uh, P9DX3 this week because I'm trying to get in, I want to look like Tony, you know, Tony Horton, Sean T. It's when I get up on stage, 
don't have the gut. You don't. Who do I want to be? Why? What are the things going on in my head that cause me to buy that? Okay? And then why do I buy all those damn upsells that Bobak puts in front of me? I swear, dude. So, anyways, so this is important. If you just get a general sense of this stuff about your audience, you can run a really good ad. Okay? And everybody gets into the technical side of Facebook ads. I'm, very, I'm not going to show you hardly anything today about the technical side of Facebook ads because I could give a damn. The people that I know are really good at Facebook ads are good at people. Not talking to people necessarily because we're all nerds, let's be honest. <laughs> we are. There's a bunch of nerds in here. That's good though. We make a lot of money being nerds. But the point is they're good at people and they understand how people think. The people that are good at Facebook ads, the people that are good at any sort of ads are good because they understand people, not because they understand the technical stuff. I can hire someone to teach me the technical stuff. You guys can buy a course to learn the technical stuff, but you got to get people. Okay? There's very few courses out on that. They're out there, but we don't buy them much, do we? It's funny. So, a couple things here. Let's say we want to sell a peeler. There's at least 20 people in here that are selling a peeler right now, right? <laughs> Just take a break. I don't have a peeler, I promise. So, if we wanted to sell a peeler, that's like something that's like kind of a obtrusive on Facebook, right? Like nobody comes to Facebook to buy a, a vegetable peeler, right? No, they don't. So how the hell are we going to do it? We have to interrupt their day with something. We have to interrupt their day with something that's so amazing and such a good deal that they actually pay attention to it. Because if it's not a good deal, who cares? It's just another thing they want me to buy, all right? So if it's something obtrusive, now, if it's a t-shirt, that's, that's who I am. That's who I am. I can wear that. But if it's something like a peeler, a vegetable peeler, I have to be a little bit different with it. So the kind of stuff you wear on your chest that says who you are, the stuff you stick on your car, that stuff's easy to sell on Facebook. Super easy. Not hard at all. This stuff is harder. And that's why I wanted to cover it today. Hopefully that's cool. First thing is, let's say I was selling my peeler. Do people who watch the cooking channel, would that possibly be someone that would be in my audience. Now, is that a great, I mean, that's a big audience, right? That's not a great starting, you know, that's not a great starting targeting that I would want to stick with, but I might start with it and learn some things about this audience. The other thing is like, who's some, who are some celebrities? Who are some of these heroes? Rachel Ray, who can name some other great cooking peeps? Yeah. Emerald, good. Good. Don't have a bunch of cookers in here, really? Yeah, there we go. So some really good ones. So this is who we would start with. But I'm not going to stay there for too long, but this is who I'm going to start with. Let me ask you something. If I put up an item, it's a great price, and you're at least somewhat interested in the item, are you going to click on the item, the ad? Right? You guys will click on the ad if you're somewhat interested. If you get to the page and the price is right, are you probably going to buy it if you were somewhat interested enough to click on the ad in the first place? Yeah, right? If you're running an ad and you're getting a lot of clicks and nobody's buying, something's wrong. So if you're ever running one of these ads and you're not getting a connection, you've got something wrong with your connection to who the audience is or your ad is vague. How many of you in internet marketing, all your years in internet marketing guys have seen a vague ad or a vague email that got you to click something? <laughs> right? The problem with those is it doesn't work in this scenario. You have to be very upfront. Hey, you want this? Here's the deal. It used to be this. This is what it is now. If you're going to buy it, click the damn link. Okay? If not, ignore it and move on to your cat. You know? Love cat videos on Facebook. It really, that's 90% of my day, actually. So, ugly ad, it works. I pop this in front of someone who possibly might need one, and I say, you know, it's normally this, but it's a buck now. They didn't get on Facebook thinking they needed a damn vegetable peeler. But how many of you have bought stuff from me day in and day out, shit you didn't think you needed when the day started? How about from Jason and Will? But it, was ju it fit, right? You're like, yes, I do actually need this, and what a good price. This is how it works. We put a simple ad in front of them. 
Now, this doesn't seem like anything revolutionary, right? Because it's just some joker trying to sell you a peeler. However, you add something like this as a page and things start to change a little bit. The psychology behind what you're thinking when you see something like this in a subtle way absolutely changes. Why? Now it's one of these kick-ass deal sites that we all love, right? That nobody can monetize long term. (laughs) But we don't have to. We need four days, right? We need four days. The point is, just that simple title of a page in a little 24 means that we did a good job. By the way, if you're ever speaking and you see a lot of cameras come up, it means you said something profound. Just throwing that out there, just in case you didn't know. (laughs) Or at least you fooled them into thinking you did. So with this particular ad, we're going to target people that are into cooking, okay? We're going to give them a really good deal. Now, is the dollar thing going to work forever? No. Do we need it to? Nope. We don't. Is it still working now? No, it's not. Don't do it. But the point is, with this particular setup, it's simple. I'm not telling you a lot about this peeler but it's pretty apparent it's a peeler there's a picture of it do you love cooking are you ready to kick it up a notch nothing genius about this this is one of the worst headlines you could put on but guess what it's gonna work this is not advanced copywriting this is just asking a question and saying a small benefit of why you might want this and saying it's a dollar what is the key thing that you were drawn to on this ad It's a buck, right? It's a buck. This is kind of one of those things where you see it and you're like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that's a buck. I'm interested because I'm into this, but I'm not sure if it's a buck. I want to get the click to the page though, right? Because you want to see if it's really a buck. Now, if I led straight to the Amazon listing, would that be a bad thing? Yes. Holy shit, yes. (laughs) I did not say to do that. I will get three Facebook messages tonight. You told me to. No, I didn't. So that's the ad. Super simple. Nobody can't do that, right? Everybody in the room, even if you don't know how to use Facebook ads, you can figure it out and run that piece of crap, right? Yeah. The real sticking point is it's the deal site thing. And that's what works for us. It's the deal site thing. It's just giving someone something that they can get behind. Okay? So where does the ad go? That's the interesting part, right? Where does the ad actually go? What's it look like? Am I saying exactly what I said in the ad pretty much on this page? Yeah, yeah. I think my dollar thing got cut off when I actually did that. But yeah, we'd say it was a dollar on there. But yeah, there it is. I see it down at the bottom. So it's a dollar, right? But what do you have to do to get this amazing deal? Give me your email. Now, let's take a step back. Let's take a quick step back here. And this is where we step into integrating the Ranker tool, by the way. We're not there yet, but we'll get there in just a second. Just understand I'm transitioning if anybody's paying attention to the titles. The key here is, if they're just checking and they think it's BS and they're not really interested in this, Are they going to give their email address to someone who they think is BSing them? No. If they really want the damn thing, are they giving me their email address? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Okay? So they're going to click on it. They're going to give me their email address. The beautiful part here is the timer. Okay? Now, if you would like, I can tell you how I built this page. I hacked it together a little bit. I built the page in lead pages. I downloaded the raw file. I put my code in there for the timer. That's it. The really interesting thing about this timer is this. And once again, please don't think I'm trying to sell you anything that I've built because other people do this. This timer is evergreen. It cookies you. So you jump on this page, you've got 23 hours to hit it no matter what. Okay? 23 hours, 23 hours, 59 minutes when you hit the page. If someone hits it two days later, they've got 23, (laughs) you get the idea, right? So the timer always functions in that way. And if you come back to this page personally later, like maybe you saved it, 
the, con- the countdown will continue for you only. Okay, so we, we save a little bit there. And like I said, I could not figure out how to code this, you know, because I can't code my way out of a bag. But like, that's the software we're using for that. Okay, so 24-hour timer. Does that make sense to everybody so far? Am I boring you or is this cool? Okay, cool, cool. All right. <laughs> Funny jokes in my head, sorry. All right, so what's next? This is where we integrate the ranker tool. Okay, where does the ranker link go? Between the two. Now you can split test this, and I would actually ask you to split test this in your own personal life because I've seen it work differently between different industries. Sometimes I take them directly to the Amazon listing after they opt in, but sometimes I also make them go to their email first. It really depends on the item, okay? But just starting out of the gates with this one, we just led straight to it from the page. Once they opted in, that was the thank you page. And I actually had it listed. I didn't even coupon code this one. I was like, $1, boom, go, go, go. Okay? Everybody does this a little different based on their actual results. But everybody has different results. So test things and watch what happens. Everybody get that? Good. Good, good, good. Okay? So... A couple key things here. Let's just kind of review what we've done so far. Does this protect our page from people who aren't going to buy? Yeah. If you came from a page that says you have 23 hours and 59 minutes to buy this if you opt in here and then you land on the page and it actually says a dollar, are you going to mess around too much if you really wanted it that much? No, because if you leave, what happens? It's in your head. You may not be thinking about it consciously, but it's in your head. If you leave this page, what happens? The deal goes away. Okay? That's the key. You've set that trap in their mind that if they miss this, the deal goes away. Okay? That's important because of what we're about to do next. Okay? That's opening a loop. All right, let's move forward. Now, as I said, just doing this the right way is going to get you sales and increased rank. How many of you in the room can attest to this? Just running them through this system can get you, okay? Few, the few of you that have implemented this particular thing, and pretty much up to this point, this is a modification of what my buddy Ben Cummins is doing, okay? Got to give him props. This thing works. Now, one more thing I need to actually mention because they told me I could talk as long as I wanted. <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> Every so often, someone screws up and puts me on stage. Two or three times a year, it happens. So, no. With this, your ad spend. That's the number one question I get on this is, what do we spend on ads, Ben? And what I normally do is I will start anywhere between $15 and $20. That's it. $15 to $20, I do cost per click because I don't care if you see it. I want you to click on it. And I only want to be charged when you click on it. So $15 to $20. Bucks. Here's what nobody understands about Facebook ads because they give up too quickly. Well, no, not nobody, but most people. As a Facebook ad matures and it gets out there and it starts growing into a big, strong Facebook ad, it gets cheaper. If you get clicks, Facebook says, you get your ad cheaper. Pretty damn cool, right? So what's funny is, I can go in the hole on a Facebook ad the first three days with the full knowledge that I'm doing just enough that that ad is maturing. So it's getting clicks and I made a couple sales. Now if you get no sales in like three days and you're getting clicks, something's wrong, right? right? But if you're getting sales, but maybe your clicks are too expensive, (laughs) fight the urge to stop it. Let me say that again, because everyone will do this. I still, I still want to click the button. Fight the urge to stop it, okay? 20 bucks or so a day, the ad is going to start gaining steam. God forbid people start sharing your ad. It happens every time, especially with a deal like what I showed you. People, hey man, I, don't, I love to cook, but she loves to cook too. My friends love to cook. Let me share this. Everybody needs to get in on it. So it's free then, right? So the real key here is start low. You know, I know you guys just invested a ton of money on inventory you're about to, right? That sucks, right? You know, I, especially as a digital marketer, I'm like, I just wrote a PDF, put it out there, and all the inventory I want. and had to get into this, right? And, but it's great. Because I don't have to write crazy copy for a vegetable peeler. 
People just need it. You know, I don't have to convince them why they need it. They just need it. But the point is, you guys invested some money. You don't have to with your traffic. Not much. You can start off very cheap. What happens if you dial it in and you nail it and you get that ad right? It's going to take off. This is how you see people that have Facebook ads. How many of you get pissed when you see those um, one cent Facebook ads? Bastards. What a bunch of assholes, man. And they're always the ones that post, too. They're always the ones that are like, oh, one cent ads. They don't tell you that they made no money on those one cent ads. But they have the one cent ads. But the key here is, is a lot of times they're showing you stats after several days, after that ad has matured. So everybody going to wait a little bit if you're making a couple sales out of the gate? Because it will get better, I promise. It's the hardest thing to do is when you see that first day, you're getting just... You're getting your head beat in, right? But you've made a couple sales. As long as you're making a couple sales and people are, it's converting for you, you're getting what we came after, right? How many of you realize you can go in the hole selling product for a few days and ultimately it'd be amazing, right? Good. Because once you get ranked on the first two, three pages, it's on, right? Okay. Ready for retargeting? Okay. So, a couple things here. I put this slide up just so I could say that I said it. This is the structure. For those of you that have bought Leadlock from me, cool. If you find something else that does what Leadlock does, use it. You don't have to buy, you know, that's, I would love for you to buy from me because I know I'll take care of you, but you don't have to. All I'm looking for is you have something that you can do retargeting on Amazon with. There aren't many out there. We have the best, and I say that for sure because we built it. But this is how you do it. You take your Amazon item the same way that, you know, you learned how to do it to put it in the ASM Ranker tool. Once you generate that URL, you put that URL inside of Leadlock. And then you use Leadlock as your ad URL. Make sense? That's where you're sending traffic from. Okay? So everything that passes through that Leadlock URL will now be connected with a cookie for Facebook targeting. Okay? Even if you don't know what ads you're going to run for the retargeting ad, still connect this stuff. Because if you're building a custom audience, and let's say you get 100 to 1,000 people to click through that ad, even if you don't know the retargeting ads you're going to put up, or maybe you don't have time to put that ad together like I'm going to show you in just a second, you're still building the custom audience, right? And let me tell you, if you think the traffic that you're sending is cheap beforehand to your listing... Wait until you see what you're doing with these custom audiences. Why? For those of you that were on a Leadlock webinar at some point with us, why? Because those people have raised their hand and said, I am interested in that peeler. I got distracted, but I am interested. Okay? And that's important. Make sense? Cool. If you guys ever get lost, just hit us up in the group. Hit Jason up. Jason loves to explain this. Just kidding. (laughs) Hit me up. I'll take care of you. All right, so with this particular setup, if you were using lead pages, you could pop the thank you page in here. Um, Most of the time, what I actually do, guys, is you know how when you're setting up an autoresponder form, you can put in like a little URL for the thank you page? That's where I actually put it in, okay? And then I actually integrate this. How many people use lead pages? I should probably ask that. How many of you lose leads and it pisses you off? Okay. Stop using the built-in API, start using the form code, put it in under Office Autopilot. I just saved you a lot of money, all right? That's the way you do it and you don't lose anything. So with this particular setup, we put it in there. That's how we put our lead link in. Let's move forward. All right, so we start building that retargeting list. For those of you that have never really done retargeting, you may not understand how powerful this is, okay? I have never lost money on retargeting. I have been hung over and threw an ad together and did not lose money on retargeting. And the reason is, is because these people are your most targeted people on the planet. Okay? We cannot, I don't care how much you understand human psychology, I don't care how long you've been doing Facebook ads, you cannot build me an audience that is going to convert better than a retargeting audience because those people have already told you they're into what you're doing. Okay? Something just kept them from going all the way. One more point. 
And this is a good tip for you because many of you are perfectionists. How many, is, how many of you are perfectionists and you know it and you hate it? Right? Many of you are going to say, well, Ben, how do I turn off the retargeting if they buy the Amazon item? Who was thinking that? Right? Don't. Don't. How many of you have ever bought something, you thought it was cool, and you bought something else for a friend a couple days later, the exact same thing? Leave that damn thing going. If they bought it, they're not clicking through again. Okay? Let it rock. Trust me, I have the conversions to prove this. I look at, actually, like many of you hit me up and said, you probably don't know my name. I'm like, I know your name. I watch this stuff. Many people actually buy the same thing from us. Do they buy it from me because they made a mistake? No, they bought it for themselves. They love the product so much, they bought it for a friend. How many of you have ever bought something for a friend because you thought it was so cool, right? Leave the retargeting ad up. Don't worry about turning it off. That's more technical work anyway. Be lazy. How many times do you hear that? Okay, be lazy. Don't do all the extra to turn the retargeting ad off. That's the key. All right, so let's start building this audience. All right, how many of you have seen this before? It's evil. The problem with retargeting ads, okay? If any of you need any help setting up retargeting, by the way, and you don't know how to do it, hit me up in the group. I'll cut you a video. Would love to cut you a personal video to actually show you how to do this and put it in our group. I'm not going to show you technical stuff today because you won't remember it anyway. I wouldn't. Let me tell you how you actually run these ads and what you need to be thinking. They already saw the item, right? They saw the item. They saw that they could get it for a dollar, right? We got them interested enough in this item that they could go in and click the button, but then something went wrong. We don't know what went wrong, but something went wrong. And that thing that went wrong kept us from getting our conversion. Those sons of bitches. All right? I get mad. You clicked on my ad. You cost me money and you didn't buy this thing. We're going to fight. I'm from the South, by the way. I don't know if any picked that up. So here's what you have to do with your retargeting ad. Simple tweaks. You have to introduce another level of scarcity or you have to introduce another level of benefit for them to actually take action on the thing that they skipped before, okay? If you run the same ad to them and you don't call them to action, something like that, maybe you're going to get a click. I mean, you can still make money that way. But with this, you will actually start seeing conversions. And... One of the really interesting things about this diamond is it doesn't think a lot of addition to the ad that you ran before. It takes one line of text, okay? And I'll show you it in a sec. So is it okay that those of you that have seen this, is it okay that I go through it again for everybody else? Okay, cool. So here's the deal. Time-based scarcity. I've shown you that one, right? We saw it already, but we didn't stress it too much in the ad. What if we ramped it up, Right? Now I'm like getting excited. Guess what happens Sunday if you're on my email list? You ramp it up. They knew they had 24 hours, right? They knew they had 24 hours. So that's what's in their head. And maybe they forgot about it, whatever. That next ad can't really just be straight 24 hours. Now you can do the same thing and you're still going to make sales. It will just remind them of the 24 hours. But if you were really wanting to stick it to them and really wanting them to make a decision, yes or no. And really, we're not doing anything sneaky because they still have the yes or no option. Some of you are like, that bastard. If you really want to take it up a notch, then what you need to do is take the time way down. Okay? So you go from 24 hours, take it to three. Okay? And then it's going to get even more sneaky when you see what happens when they click on the ad. Three hours. So 24 was the page initially. Now we're taking them to a page that has three hours, okay? And that's what the ad actually says. With that particular setup, does it force you to act and make a decision? Yes or no decision, but does it force you to make a decision? Yeah. Does everybody in the room, raise your hand if you're still awake after lunch, does everybody understand why that's working? Good. Some of you are still awake. All right. So we got that. Private discount. Private discount. Okay? This is tougher on Amazon, just to be real honest with you. Because if, if you're sending them to a page that's a dollar initially, 
what are you going to do? I mean, so I don't use that one on Amazon. If I do, like, if I have, like, a Shopify store or a store that we've set up our own, I may send them to something that's half off because I'd rather have some sale than no sale, right? So that would be a retargeting ad. It would say, you saw this earlier. You didn't get it. It's 25% off. Guess what? I am shutting that damn ad off if they buy, (laughs) just so you know. I'm not showing that to people that have already bought for obvious reasons. I never do that to you guys, by the way. (laughs) Availability-based scarcity. We got two left. Now, is that a very real scenario on Amazon? (laughs) Those of you that have run these things, yes, it is. Don't be, don't lie, but when you try, if you were to do an availability-based ad on there, try to get it very close to what you expect to have when they get to see the ad. Okay, simple, super simple. Don't be dishonest and disingenuous with folks. The last thing is the trust builder ad. This is the one that I like the best, um, but it's not quick. This is if you were trying to sell things over a long haul, okay? So this doesn't fit so much into like our four-day model of selling things at a dollar to up our conversions. But just for those of you that need to know, if someone was wanting to buy a vegetable peeler, they clicked on it, they got retargeted, but they didn't buy it right then, what might we put in front of them as a trust builder instead of sending them back to the item? Ebook with recipes that are like five minute recipes, something awesome, something that they would like gourmet meals in five minutes, right? That's the title of our ebook gourmet meals in five minutes. Every damn recipe features what? A peeler. <laughs> yes. Because when I teach them those things, they trust me. But you know what? They're buying that peeler for 19 bucks this time. They ain't buying it for a dollar. But that's, that's what we do. So instead of retargeting straight back to the item, which is the typical what everybody teaches you, if you feel like you have a trust issue, and this is really good for more expensive items that some of you may have, if you feel like you have a trust building issue, that's what you would do. You'd retarget them, but send them to a page that actually eased them through a process. Now, you have to get a little more with an email list on that. And if you wanted any questions on how to do that for your personal item, come hit me up. But there you go. Do all those make sense as to how to construct an ad differently than an initial ad? Or am I being vague? Okay, good. Let me be a little more. Same ad, right? Almost. Almost. Except it says expire in three hours. Okay? Now, here's the thing. They've already opted in right? They've already opted in. So am I going to send them back to a page that tells them to opt in for the deal again? No. So you're less protected, okay? But pay attention. We're not sending them back to the Amazon page. We're sending them back to another page, except for when they land on the page, they have a different page. It looks almost exactly the same, except for it's got a different timer on it. And that timer is now set for 29 minutes. So they clicked on an ad. It said three hours, 29 minutes. How many of you hate me because I'm a shady bastard? Right? Right. I know. <laughs> when you're standing up here, you don't always know who hates you. So when you, look at, when you guys look at me like, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. The front row up here is awful about it. Like, there's a few that are trying. Anyways. So this is what we do, though. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to force a decision. I'm not trying to do anything evil. I'm not trying to, you know, do anything just that's going to get you to buy without you knowing it. You do not buy in on this unless what? You want a peeler. Now, I get some messages at my help desk sometimes that says, Ben, you're a little too good at this, and I didn't really want to buy this, but you talked me into it. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. Anybody that's ever said anything like that to themselves, that's bullshit. You only buy if you want to buy. And this forces you to make a decision. I love time-based scarcity because it forces people to make a decision that they want to make. Okay? If you don't really want it, you move on. I got the stats to prove it. So, much less time to buy. So there's two pages like this. There's a page that gets you to opt in, and then there's a, basically a page here. By the way, the one at the bottom should say, and I just screenshotted the wrong one. The one at the bottom should say, click here to get the deal now, and you don't have to enter your email address. Okay? Make sense? Now, do you have to do all of this? Do you have to do all of the whole thing the first time out? What should you all start with? If you, the Facebook ad, 
to Ben's page, Ben Cummins' page, leading them into an opt-in that leads them to, to protect your conversions. If you start with those three things, you're going to kick ass. Promise. You will kick ass. If you don't kick ass the first time, guess what's going to happen the second time? You're going to suck a little less. I work on a business model of sucking a little bit less every time. And I've somehow talked to these bastards into putting me on stage. So it must be working, right? So suck a little less every time. But the thing is, <laughs> I know they made a mistake, didn't they, man? So the real key here is when you put this together, it may not work well for you the first time. I'm going to tell you, if it doesn't work well for you the first time, it's one reason 90% of the time. You just didn't understand your audience that well. Okay? You didn't understand who you were talking to that well. But... I promise you, that's going to cost you 20 to 60 bucks. You're going to get over it really quickly. And you're going to say, you know what? If I maybe targeted these people and tweak this a little bit, we do a little better. And the next time you're going to suck less. And finally, you're going to hit that magic place where you're profitable. And when you're profitable, it's game over. It's done. And you want to talk about the best feeling is when you put that funnel in place and it's profitable for the first time. There is nothing like it. Okay. Now, one more handy tip. You guys want a tip that's not on the slides? Okay. If you're running something like this continuously, the ad is going to stop working after about two weeks on average. Okay? Just going to happen. It's going to stop working. So here's what you do. You throw about three ads in the rotation that are kind of like this, but instead of like the wooded background, I would throw in like a dark wood background. Crazy, right? And then you're going to rotate them. So the ad that was killing it for you, don't stop it, pause it, start another one that's very similar, run it until you get it dialed in, and then you're going to run these three ads on rotation. Because an ad that worked but stopped working will continue to work later on unless something crazy happens. They get blind to it. Or your competitors find it and they start clicking the shit out of it, and you want to mix it up on them, right? That's why I wear glasses to the event so you don't know who the hell I am. When it's, yeah, it works, man, it works. I'm just kidding. So... I'm just being silly. So the key is, is you run those ads and once you dial it in, it's going to be good. You know, I just put out a product about funnels and that was the thing. It's like, I had all these people say, well, Ben, I don't think I'm going to hit this the first time. I'm like, nobody does. None of these big Facebook gurus ever tell you about the shit that they messed up three weeks before they finally dialed the thing in. But most of these guys are so nerdy. Like, listen, me and Don Wilson sit in front of a computer more than anybody I know. And it's because we're dialing stuff in. We're worse than most everybody else out of the gate. We're just more persistent. That's it. I know people that like have guessed these ads at the right time. I'm like, you suck. That's amazing. It's amazing. But that's the point. That's where we're going. So here's the thing. They push the button. No opt-in. They go through the ranker link still, and they go to the page. That's the flow. Now, emails. You built a list, right? Remember that? We built a list. That was cool. We built a list. And who did we build a list under? What name did we build a list under? Was it our name? No. 24-hour deals. How many of you get 24-hour deal emails from Groupon or somebody like that? I do. The cool thing is when someone opts into something like this, you can email them more than once. Because... Even if you're not talking about the same item, let's say things went crazy and you decided, you know what, that peeler is not for me anymore. I'm going for a cooking mat. Same audience, right? Yeah. You can use that list again. If you segment this list, you can send multiple things from different things. Like I could literally go to all of you today and be like, I need a deal a day from you guys. Can I get a deal a day from each one of you? You'll take it down to a dollar the day that we talk and I'll put it up for you. We'll run traffic. And this is, our, this is what we'll do. And every day we could do that. And people would open it and people would buy. Because people love buying stuff that's 20 bucks for a dollar. It's crazy. Like what Jason said, the people that don't because they don't believe it, split test it up to, the, test it up to 10, see if they'll buy it for 10. It really doesn't matter. You can test it. This is the flow that we actually go through. So right away, they get on the list, right? They opt in. They go to the page to buy the item. Immediately, I'm going to send them an email that links them to that. So three-hour page the next day. So I, I didn't put this one in here. Immediately, I, I do hit them with an email saying, hey, you signed up for this. Make sure you get it. 
and it takes them to the 24-hour page. This is your follow-up sequence after, though, okay? So there's actually four emails. I'm really good at doing slides at 3 in the morning. Shut up. So first email is the immediate. Right after that, we're going to send them to the three-hour page via the email list the next day. Does that, does that jive, if you think about it? They opted in, and they had 24 hours, and then the next day you send them to, to the timer that's the three-hour one, right? So that jives. It's about right. After that, I'm going to send, this is where we start getting the evil, so everybody, I gave you the disclaimer, this is the evil part. Second email, we hit them up three days into it. Remember, we're doing like a four-day sale. Hey, we got a little extra stock left over from the sale. Click here to go grab it. We only have a few left, and it's to that three-hour page again. Okay? What's cool is, is if they clicked it the first time but didn't buy it, the timer actually runs out. And they're like, fuck. Ah. You know, it pisses them off. They're like, well, I guess next time I'll pay attention. So when you email them the next one, yeah. So one day after the second email, you can do the three-hour page. And sometimes, like, I will actually watch it. Sometimes that second one doesn't do much. I'm thinking maybe they click through. I'll set up a new timer and send them to that so they're cookie for it. As I said, this is a little advanced. Don't start off with this. But that's basically what we're doing. And what's nice is when you get done with this four-day setup that you just did, and a month down the road, you want to hit these people up again to sell them more. Not all of them are going to buy. Say it again. God forbid you got two items in the same category. It's crazy, right? So, everybody get this? Good. Good. So, before I get into uh, question mode, with this particular setup, how many people in the room, the 20% bare minimum that we talked about? How many of you can do this? 20%. Okay, for those of you that have your hands raised, raise, keep them up. Keep them up. We're all friends here. We're not too smelly. For those of you that can do that, how many of you are okay with maybe running three sets of ads and messing the first two up and maybe finally dialing the next one in? Okay, cool. You can put them down. I was really messing with you that time. For those of you that are doing that, how many of you are cool with coming back inside of our ASM Masters group and saying, hey, Ben Cummins, don't ask me. Ben Cummins is who you ask. <laughs> ben Cummins, could you tell me what's wrong with my ad campaign? And he will. He'll get on it. He's great. He's wonderful. No, any of us that are in that group would love to help you out. And I think that's the other thing that I see. Utilize the group more. Um, if you saw me last night fighting with somebody, it's only, the, it's only the people that like to fight with me that ever talk to me. You know, you guys are in the room. I'd love to talk to you. Come in, ask. If you have something that's not working after you've tested a little bit, you just aren't dialed into it. Ask, we'll get you there. The second that you get this thing dialed in, you'll start seeing boost right away. Okay? Just off the 20%. You start getting that and you start, pro start getting profitable start stacking on these layers. You know, don't worry about the email list when you first start. You know, just don't. You know, maybe send that first email out. Don't worry about the retargeting. I love retargeting. I think it's the easiest thing in the world. We built our stuff so it would be easier. But don't worry about it. Not when you start because it will slow you down. Just get the damn thing up and run traffic to it. Once you dial in the initial traffic, then you run the retargeting. Cool? So any questions? Uh, I'm here. I'll try to keep the profanity down. This is always the interesting part because you don't know if they're going to ask you about something for the bar later. Or, you know. No pressure. How you doing? What do you got, man? So obviously the goal is not to sell all of our inventory for a dollar each. Yeah. So at what point, what's the goal of this? And at what point do you stop and change to something different that makes more money? It'd be great if uh, Amazon would tell us these things, right? So what I do. And these guys that have done a little bit more of this than me would be great to answer that question even further. But what I do is we will go through, I will have an estimate. So I actually sit down and have a goal. And we'll say, you know what? I want to sell, I think if I can sell 25 a day for four days in a row, it's going to give me a significant bump. Now, have I been wrong on that before? Yeah, I have. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it. I'm just going to go through. And the cool thing about doing that is this. You can budget that, right? So if I'm losing 25 a day at a dollar, I actually have numbers in my head as to what I'm losing. 
And I can actually say, okay, on the other end, we have to make this up, and I have to sell this many at the regular price to make this sell up. So what's interesting is this. If you get in kind of a budget crunch, you can say, I can't do this again. I have to be okay with the little boost I got. I can't do this again until I have a little bit extra built up to do it. I'm less concerned about if we guessed right than being able to predict when we can do this. You know, budgeting is the ultimate with this. If you don't know your numbers, you're done. How many people have I talked to already that didn't quite know their numbers well enough? And it really held them back for a couple of weeks. So that's, that's the key is I will say, hey, I want to do 25 a day for four days. As soon as that hits, then I am moving on. What's cool is you hit 25 a day right away, like really fast because you nailed the ad. What do you do? Shut the ad off. Turn on the next day. So you have some really good control over that, but have a budget and have a good guess. What I'd like to do is I like to think, well, how many damn peelers are probably getting sold today? You know, and I really will start researching and looking at what's first, what's second. I'll spend a good week just kind of looking at that. You know, I'll spend 15 minutes a day looking at that as I prep the sale. And that's how I do it. So hopefully I answered. Cool. So uh, with regards to split testing, I, I was wondering, are you using like HyperTracker or something to get a specific link so you can <laughs> differentiate the two? This is a good question. Um, you're not going to like the answer. I don't split test anything the first few days because I don't know enough to split test. Everybody tells you to go out and split test. The people that typically teach split testing Facebook ads have been doing Facebook ads long enough that they know the audience so they can say, well, if we make this blue, it'll, you know, it'll be good. So here's what I do. I put something up and I'm like, can I make a couple sales? Like I, I, I'm, all I'm doing is I'm tracking down through my links and did we make a sale? That's it. So I'm doing clicks, two opt-ins, two sales. That's all I'm looking at. If those numbers look somewhat pleasing, then I will go in and say, let's do a split test. And like literally what I'm doing is I will set up two different lists. So I'm not even doing any of this crazy click tracking. And the reason is because it slows me down. Okay. Now, if I'm selling peelers for a year and I'm really making good money on them, I'm investing in hybrid. Yeah, exactly. So to start out, it's not what I'm supposed to say as a Facebook ads guy. But it's the, mo it's the problem most people have when they get started with Facebook ads is they do too much. Okay. So just see if the damn thing sells. Good question. That's a great question. Yes? What bar are we drinking at tonight? What now? Bar drinking? <laughs> if, I, if I said it out loud, <laughs> we would be true. No, I'm just All right, so I have a question about the retargeting process. Hmm? Where uh, when you said retargeting, you showed that you were sending them directly to the Amazon page. That was scary. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay, so first ad, in between page with the 23 hour timer, 24 right. hour timer. Retargeting ad that they get retarded with to the three hour. And then the three hour protects the Amazon. Back out. Yeah, and Sweet. then you're answering micro tool. So no, that's a great question because I'm sure, I'm sure I confused it, so no, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> For the the uh, custom audience, do yes. you, uh, those those UID scrapers are uh -huh. they even worth using, or do you just no? Use it? Yeah, don't 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 mess with them. I'm gonna use profanity for effect. Don't fucking do it. <laughs> All right. Don't use the scrapers. Okay. Um, here's what happened. A bunch of us idiots taught this for a while because Facebook absolutely allowed it. Facebook loved it. Facebook was getting paid hand over fist because us goofballs were using scrapers. Now of you will figure out is why would Facebook build in that function if they didn't want you to do it? They did want you to do it. However, what happened? Facebook protects user experience. That's it. Too many complaints. They shut it down. They started taking people out. So the only custom audiences I will use now is a retargeting built custom audience. Okay. Or if I have put people on an email list, which I explicitly told them they could be targeted because they are signing up for an email list. So with this one, you could put a little extra in that opt-in saying, hey, I may put you in a custom audience so I can hit you forever instead of just the retargeting. But that's getting a little advanced. But yeah, good All question. Right, cool, yeah, thanks. absolutely. Yes. Have you tried any other different pricing for your discount? Um, you know, like I'm selling some more expensive items that I'd hate to give away for a dollar? No, don't give it away for a dollar. Um, it's just got to be ridiculous. Okay. Like that's the thing. Like, how many, like we used to give away a free massage on one of our things. And like, that was ridiculous. Like, you know, if I did half off, people were like, oh, it's cool, yeah, half off, yeah, I'll sign up, I'll call. We did free, people were like, they would literally call, is this for real? Right. So it has to be in that ridiculous stage. So if you're selling a $40 item and you're selling it for five or 10, 
Yeah. Okay. You can do that. A lot of times what you can do is with this markup that we're talking about, like we kind of have our metrics of how we mark this stuff up, you can usually take it to write down your cost, and usually that hits, not with everybody, but that usually hits kind of close to the ridiculous. Okay. So that's what I do. Thanks. Yeah. What's up, man? I'm just uh, curious, what's the difference with the lead lock compared to um, just building a custom audience with a tracking pixel? On Amazon. You can't? Mm -hmm. Like... What I want, what I really want, well, you can do it, but you're going to get your ass in trouble. The thing is, is with Amazon, they, they're not real cool with you putting code in places, okay? And what we're basically doing with LeadLock is we run you through a pass-through. So I'm just taking that Facebook code, putting it through a pass-through, so you go here, pass-through without even seeing it, to Amazon. The, if you own the web page you were selling this stuff on, you could send them to something there. Now with retargeting, you could put it on the lead page, but I don't want to retarget people necessarily just because they hit the lead page. I want to hit those people that actually passed because if they passed, then they, they raised their head one more time and said, I'm a little more interested than the average bear. Now, are there a lot of other ways you could do it? Yeah, but that's just, I'm always going to do the thing that's less technical on me. So good question though. Yeah, Absolutely. Cool. Man. Yeah, sure. What's up? Yeah. Um, the, the main things that we try to avoid with this system is low conversion, correct? Okay. Yeah, so my point is if we will create some like software that will gives us opportunity, people will buy directly from our page before they buy from Amazon. Like for example, we will have a page that says enter your payment information mm -hmm. and then once they click buy, it will di directly upload all this information to Amazon and they gonna, Couple things. You know, like no, 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 no. I got you. That's yeah. a good idea. Um, Amazon they? will hate you. <laughs> That's number one. Uh, no, no. Oh, no why ahead. they will? <laughs> <laughs> they, you, they have a sell. You know. I mean, they have a customer. So. Here's here's the problem, and I I'm just telling you from a vendor standpoint. If I had an affiliate, mm -hmm. and that affiliate sent to their page, and they made someone think that they were buying from me, and they got their credit card information. What's the big credit card company that's going to come after your ass? It's the big one, but there, someone's coming after your ass. It may not be Amazon, but you're going to have some uh, lawsuits coming. Uh -huh. So we'll figure our way around that. I like it. I mean, I'm all for getting more credit card numbers from you guys. No, but no, I kidding. mean, like, just imagine somebody came to a your Amazon right. listings already for one dollar. So what's point to not buy? You know, so that's. <sighs> it's like, my my greatest fear is collecting credit cards. Okay. Um, uh -huh. You will not see me ever collect a credit card unless it's through my merchant. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to touch that information. So yeah, but we can hire some trust service that can. Okay, but you know we, we can, can talk after. Everybody can. Uh, Basically, there's things I can't say from stage, <laughs> man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but no, it's it's an interesting idea. Absolutely, good stuff. Thanks, man. <laughs> Quick shout out for Leadlock. Leadlock's really simple. We use it for. Thanks, man. I mean, our business, so it's it's really good. Um, anyways, you mentioned. If after you get the uh, ads dialed in and the, you get them to be profitable, mm -hmm. what um, uh, the campaigns you're looking at there don't look like they would be profitable. Those are gold specifically to get your thing to rank. How do you get a profitable campaign? What does that look like? With an Amazon item? Yeah. It's back end. It's back end. So here's what happens. Like it's so hard. Like with the, you know me, I'm, I like just your funnels, mm -hmm. and it's so easy for me to dial in a funnel because I control all the pieces. With this, it's almost like okay. If I'm selling this many in a dollar to get this ranking and then I can shut everything off and I'm getting sales on autopilot, that's where you make your money back up. So when you say profitable, that's what you're talking about is the sales that happen after the organic the because done. you grab the rank. Okay. We are trading money for rank, which is, yeah, never fun. But that's the thing. If you get that rank and it really does pick up steam and it will then yeah, you make your money back pretty quickly. You just, the hard part then, and this is what you gotta watch out for everybody, make sure you got your inventory down and you know how quickly you can get inventory. Because if you start running ads, it can take off on you. And we've seen this, Wilson and I, Jason have seen this plenty of times. Someone was number one on the planet for something. And then they ran out of inventory and they lost the ranking. But if you can kind of keep that Going. So what's, what's your time frame for judging the, the campaign from the four-day sale to knowing whether or not it was profitable or not? How quick have we seen? I mean, like, everybody, everybody, every little industry we've been in, you know, on Amazon, every little category is different. But, like, I've seen some. It depends. 
sorry. Yeah, it depends on the product and how competitive it is, right? Um, it, it, that goes, that starts at how many units you're gonna give away. For example, when we entered the market for cellulite cream, it took 20 to 25 cells a day for five days to grab the number one spot. Today, it will take probably 75 cells a day, right? A Garcinia Cambogia, last time I looked at the numbers, I think it's gonna take two to 300 cells a day in order to grab the number one spot. And when I say cells per day, I, I mean keyword targeted sales, right? So it's through the ranker tool, for example. Yeah. So it really depends on the, on the market. So how much money are you gonna spend in losses, both from a product cost, as well as uh, from the FBA costs? Because you're paying not only the product, but you're also paying Amazon to sell that product uh, at a loss. Um, how much money are you gonna spend? How many sales do you have to make after that to recoup that money? So. You just got to do the math. It's pretty simple math, you know. It is. Most people won't do it, though. Most people won't do it, yeah. yeah most people are like, oh, I'm going to sell on Amazon, and we're going to eventually make some money. And apparently, you know, I hate being an adult. I don't know if you can see that from me on stage, but I hate being an adult. And unfortunately, you have to have your numbers down. If you don't have your numbers down as to what you can put out there to get to where you want to go, and you don't have a long-term plan saying, hey, if we can get this ranking, we think we can do this, it's not always going to be exactly what you thought. But a lot of times you're going to be impressed with how close you actually got if you actually sit down and do the numbers. But I, I think that's the number one thing is learn to do your numbers. And if you don't know how to do it, ask somebody. There's enough people in here that are doing numbers because they're making a lot of money. So know your numbers and it actually becomes something where you say, well, if I could just do this then we could pull this and we could continue to perpetuate this whole thing. But it's, it's a little complicated because it's different within every little scenario. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Hey. Hi. Thanks, Ben, by the way, for great content. Thanks, man. Sure. Um, going He's got a notebook. It scares me. <laughs> uh, going over the autoresponder sequence of three emails, uh -huh. I noticed that, that most of your emails were um, in nature promotional. Mm -hmm. Do you ever um, send out an email that is just strictly content and then perhaps maybe on the PS a reminder? Not in this situation. Not in this situation? Well, think about it, like I said, get back into the psychology of who, who, who's sending it. Okay. Because they opted in at something that said 24 hour deals. Mm -hmm. Like we, we know what's happening. Okay. Like you don't mm -hmm. opt into that thinking I'm not going to get yeah, sent yeah, promo yeah, emails, yeah, yeah. but it's worth, the juice is worth the squeeze sure. because you want that thing. So sure. the thing is, is when I send an email out that says 24 hour deals, they opted in yesterday. Yeah. They're going to open it. And those sure. of you that do email marketing, that's going to yeah. be a pretty big open rate for us. Yeah. And then, like I said, it'll slack off as you go. But the key is, is three emails over three, four days, mm -hmm. all promotional. Mm -hmm. And yeah, down the road, will I test some stuff like that? Yeah, but I might. It's difficult because of how they signed up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. if I were to retarget with the trust building offer, I would retarget under a different name. Like, so they would download under Ben Atkins cooking book. Yeah, who's sure. going to download yeah. that? But that's the thing. It would be from a different person. Yeah. But with that, they expect promotion. Yeah, I, I think, thank you. I think the big takeaway is just uh, shifting the whole psychology. Yeah. Yeah, from that typical internet marketing okay, to like, okay, this is just promotion. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Just if you can awesome. get in their head. Gotcha. It's over. Thank cool, you. man. Awesome. What's going hey, on? Dr. Ben. Um, okay, I just want to come from you from left field. We spent a great deal of time today talking about um, uh, PR uh, press releases with Jason. Yeah. And I was sitting in listening on one of your webinars with Leadlock and how I didn't really pay much attention to it at the time, but with uh, the emphasis on press releases and, and Leadlock, wasn't there a benefit with, with that and, and how a link could stay active or something. Too. It's tricky because if you were paying attention, I'm not talking to you, I know you were. If you were paying attention, he said, you got to be careful about putting redirects inside of your press releases. Okay. And that's very wise because that can, you know, you see a certain URL and you're like, I don't know about that. But within your press release, <coughs> wherever you lead, think about you can control where you lead a lot, right? So let's take lead lock out of it for a minute. I know it hurts me to say we're not promoting lead lock. It hurts me a great deal. But let's take lead lock out for a minute. Let's say you were sending back to a website that you owned. Just go grab the Facebook targeting pixel and put it there and retarget them that way. In that way you can get some retargeting juice in that. But press releases, yeah, the only thing that's, you know, they're so good for getting traffic, but you have to be careful how you send them out. And like I said, you want to protect 
your listing at the same time. So a lot of times, like I said, I will send them to a website that I can control with a very, you know, it looks, it looks like the Rapid Crush website. Like you guys aren't a bunch of dirty internet marketers, right? That's what it looks, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I'm just messing, we have one too. So it's supposed to look like something legit, but you can put your code in there as long as you've got it listed in your terms on the bottom of the website. I don't know if I answered your question at all, but I, I tried. What, can, I, can I take a part two and then I'll see if we get there? Okay, all right, thanks. <laughs> we'll talk, we'll talk. What's going on? Yeah, hi, Ben. Uh, first, I want to thank you. Because thank you. I got involved with this because of you. I'm it's sorry. Been a, been a load I, it was, of fun. It no, was no, devious. No, it was dirty. No apologies necessary. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Um, and this is going to be a stupid question, so I apologize. It's okay. I don't understand retargeting. So okay. could you take two minutes? I don't know if yeah. anybody else does. But Who wants to know a little bit more about retargeting? Real quick. I got two seconds. Okay. Just the concept. So basically, retargeting is this. Retargeting is putting a piece of code. So we'll go to Facebook, and I couldn't show it today. I'm sorry. We'll take a piece of code and we will put it on a web page or we'll put it through something. So if you go through a link, we know that now. We know that you touched a web page, your eyes looked at it, or at least you clicked through a link to go somewhere. Okay? And the power of that is this. If I can tell you exactly where you're going and entice you to say, yes, I'm going there, now you've said, yes, I'm interested in what you just said. And with that code that I put on the page, now I know that as a marketer. Otherwise, I just knew you click there and then I don't know anything else about you. I have to advertise to you again. But with this, now I have you collected. So this is actually going to make a collection of people that went to this page. Okay, so now it's going to send the information back to a place like Facebook. And it will tell Facebook, we have 800 people that clicked on this link and went to here. Instead of spending just on the people who love cooking, would you like to spend money just on these people? Which is insanely more powerful because we know they're into it. It's a little piece of code that you pop in that tells Facebook these are the people that actually are interested in what we were advertising or what we sent out in our email. So I could, I'd have to show you past that, but it's basically a way of saying instead of just what you've raised your hand in before in Facebook, you liked our ad. So we want to show you more stuff. Right, I'll get so, the rest. I don't want to yeah. bore it. No, it's good. It's good. But it, it's one of those things where you're like, because this was me, I heard about it for three years and then one day I was like, oh, Okay, and it works. So, okay. yeah, absolutely. Get a few more beers in me and it'll be much more clear. <laughs> What's going on? Hi there. Um, my question was, in your experience, is this something that you pretty much limit to your to four days and then you get your rankings up and then it's, it takes off from there? Or Depends do you, on do the you item. constantly do, do it or, or is it? Depends you know, on the item. Um, there's a couple of things I could go into right now that there's not much competition and it would be bam, like that, uh, for four days. I mean, that would be it. But then there's a lot of other things that like, you know, I would have to do like what Wilson said. I'm going to have to do like 300 copies in four days. But like four days can typically jump you quite a bit. And I think anybody that's actually run anything like this in the room can say this is, this is how it works. Um, what's interesting though is if I, if I get a bunch of rank and then I start getting some sales and it kind of maintains or it grows a little in there and I want to redo it again, yeah, I'll run it again. I'll do it until I get to where I want to go. If you have the patience in a very competitive market, like we're talking a very competitive market, and you have the patience, just, just the longer you sit, as long as you're making sales, the longer you sit, the more you run little things to get traffic to boost you a little more, you'll constantly gain ground on people. But then you also got to keep in mind there's other, these other bastards that are doing the same thing because they were here too. I'm sorry. And then, and then do you use it? Um, do you use it beyond? The one dollar sales, do you use it for like a ten dollar sale and later on? It's not gonna work you, real great. No. Ten dollar sales, if it's like a twenty, thirty dollar product, yeah. possibly will work great. But you're selling for full price on Facebook. Uh -huh. oh, I didn't come to Facebook to look for your item. Now doing like a yeah. Google ad or something? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. But yeah, Facebook you're interrupting them. So okay. thank you. Good question. Hey, I wonder if you've got any any data on this. I've been experimenting a lot with Pricing, uh, coupon codes, discounts, you know, zero dollar offers, mm -hmm. one dollar offers, 50% off, just a whole bunch of things. And I'm sort of developing this idea that Amazon gives you different levels of juice depending on how you're moving it. it uh, uh, initially, I think we were told that even 100% even off coupon gives you the same boost as a full price sale. Not so much anymore. And I'm not, I'm not seeing that. Let me just say this, and this is a plug for the group. You are all aiming at a moving target. And they are all 
Every day, tweaks are being made to this algorithm. There is no possible way any of us as individuals could track this on our own. And this is why it's so damn important to show up for the conferences, to come to Cabo, to show up in the Facebook group and see just kind of what's going on because this is a moving target. And if you don't have a lot of people putting their data into the mix, because you got good data, like you're starting to see things. Yeah. There's somebody else sitting in this room, I guarantee you, that has seen some similar things. You guys start talking, we all start talking, we learn. But that's the thing, Amazon's not gonna tell us. The one, just as a, uh, an add-on, the one that's really surprised me is I did a coupon, buy two units and you get $2 off. Yeah. And it's just blown me away that for two bucks, people just go buy yeah. twice the product. The interesting thing is this, is, and I believe this, and I don't know your experience, uh, but the interesting thing is this, I, don't, I truly don't believe Amazon rolls out changes to the entire you know, section of everybody. They're like Facebook. Facebook rolls out a small subsection, they test, if it goes well, then it eventually goes live. So that's one of the things, you could tell me something about something, I could be selling the exact same thing, doing the exact same things, and I might see something a little bit different. So we just gotta stay on our toes because that's what's gonna happen. We're gonna start seeing little things that'll pop up, one or two people will report it, and then we'll start seeing it grow or it'll go away completely, and that's the important part. I've seen, like the zero dollar stuff, yeah, it's not, doesn't work for me. Uh, but the one, two dollar, yeah, I'm, I'm getting good results so, from it. So if you sell it for a buck, you're seeing that work? In certain things, yeah. I can't say it's across the board because I don't sell, I mean, I'm selling peelers and yeah. whiskey ball things, and yeah, so, yeah. Right. But, yeah, that was me answering your question as a politician. No, it's just, hopefully I was close. Hey. Hi. Um, the question I had was, um, do you actually bring the traffic to um, Facebook page, or do you bring it, like, to an external link? Because essentially what I've learned is that it's cheaper to bring them to a Facebook page opposed to sending them out to external links. That's a good question. Because I think, how many of you have heard, take them to a Facebook page? Cheaper. Okay. I've done a lot of ads. This is mm -hmm. one of the best questions. I mean, I get this all the time. I've run a lot of ads. When you compare the conversion of a page on Facebook, if you're like embedding it in the, you know, when you compare the conversion to what you're actually saving, it's not worth it. I would much rather get someone completely off of Facebook with no distractions than leave them on Facebook where they still have their friends things okay. up at the top and the Facebook button to click. It's worth every extra cent that I spend. And that's just in my experience. There may be other people that have seen other things. But for me, if I can get you off of Facebook and I can get you into an area where you're isolated as a customer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no distractions. No distractions okay. helps. So. Because I was wondering whether it's better to like build a page like you had the 2040, for example. Don't it's build a page uh -huh. until you have some data to support it. Like this is not a page page. Oh, okay. This is a page so I can run an ad. There ain't nobody that likes this page yet. Got it. Like when I first build them up, nobody will like it. You can still run the ad. If for some reason you had a bunch of people that were into cooking stuff and you had two or three cooking products or you had a renewable product that you could keep selling them and the ads were working, you might spend some money to put these people in a club. Okay. And that's what I think of it as. It's a little club where they can talk and they can share ideas, but every day it's sponsored by your kick-ass little product that you want to, so that's what I do. But I don't really do that kind of page until we have good data and we're making sales. Because I know you, in the past you've always said you want passionate people about mm -hmm. certain things. And these are a little more... It's I, different. I don't know what your item is, but these are more commodities. Okay. I don't get passionate about a peeler. I get passionate about what I can do with a no, peeler. No, but like cooking. Right. Would be so if you're doing well mm -hmm. and you have more things to sell them, mm -hmm. you might start corralling those people in a certain place. Yeah, okay. but not at first. I okay. wouldn't. Yeah. Great. Thank Good you. stuff. All right. Let's hear it for Dr. Ben. Thanks, man.